live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE, covering AWS reInvent 2019. Brought to you by Amazon Web Services and Intel, along with its ecosystem partners. Hey, welcome back to theCUBE's coverage of AWS 19 from Las Vegas. This is day two of our coverage of three days, two sets, lots of CUBE content. Lisa Martin here with Justin Warren, the founder and chief analyst of Pivot9. And Justin and I are joined by a couple of guests new to theCUBE. We've got David Peister next to me, global head of sales for IO Tahoe. Welcome. Thank you. Glad and to be here. Eddie Edwards, what a cool name. Global Data Services Director from Direct Energy. Welcome, Eddie. Hi, thank you. Okay, so David, I know we had somebody from IO Tahoe on yesterday, but yeah. I'd love for you to give our audience an overview of IO Tahoe, and then you got to tell us what the name means. Oh, okay. Uh, well, Dave Peister, IO Tahoe, thanks. Uh, it's a wonderful event here at AWS, uh, and excited to be here. Uh, IO Tahoe, we're located in downtown uh, Wall Street, New York. Um, and uh, IO Tahoe, well, there's a lot of different uh, meanings, but mainly Tahoe for data lake, uh, input, output into the lake is how it was uh, originally meant. So, uh, but uh, a little background on IO Tahoe. Uh, we are, uh, 2014, we uh, came out of, we, we started in Stealth, uh, came out of Stealth in 2017 with two signature clients. One you're going to hear from in a moment, uh, Direct Energy. The other one, GE, um, and we'll speak to those in, in just a moment. Um, IO Tahoe takes a unique approach. Uh, we have nine machine learning, machine learning algorithms, 14 future sets that interrogates the data at the data level. Um, we go past metadata, um, so solving that really difficult data challenge. And uh, I'm going to let uh, Eddie uh, describe uh, some of the use cases that were around data migration, uh, PII discovery, um, and uh, so over to you. First, yeah. tell Thank us you. a little bit about Direct Energy, what you, where you're located, and what you guys do, and how data is absolutely critical to your business. Yeah, sure. So Direct Energy, well, it's the largest residential energy supplier in the uh, US. Um, around um, 5,000 employees. Uh, a lot of this has come from uh, acquisitions. So as you can imagine, we have a vast amount of data that we need to manage. So currently I've got just under 1,700 applications in my uh, portfolio. And a lot of the challenges we get are around the, uh, the cost, driving down cost to serve, so we can pass that back onto our consumers. And the, the challenge that we've had is, you know, how best to gain that understanding where IO Tahoe came into play. It was mainly around our you know, ability to use the products quickly for being able to connect to our existing sources, to discover the data, but then to catalog that information, to start applying the, uh, the rules around uh, whether it be legislation like GDPR, or the, the, we, we get a lot of cases where there's a difference between the state's understandings and definitions so the product gives us the ability to bring a common approach to that information. Uh, a good success story would be about three months ago, we took uh, 13 applications for our North America home uh, business. Uh, we were able to run it through the product within a week, and that gave us the information to then consolidate the estate downwards, working with our uh, business uh, colleagues to uh, identify all the data redundancy, the uh, archival retention rules, and bring you know, more meaning to the data, and actually in, improve our sales opportunities by highlighting that rich information that was not known previously. Yeah, so you mentioned that you, you've grown through acquisition. So yep. One thing that people tend to underestimate around IT is that it's not a heterogeneous, it's, it's not a, a, a homogeneous environment, it's heterogeneous. Like as soon as you buy another company, you've got another, uh -huh. you've got another silo, you've got another data set, you've got something else. So walk us through how IOTAHU actually deals with that very disparate set of data that you've no doubt inherited from just acquiring all of these different companies. Yeah, so exactly right. You know, every time we acquire an organization, they would have various different applications that were running in the estate, whether it be an old Oracle, SAP, um, SQL type environment, 
what we're able to do is use the product to plug in and then profile to understand what insight knowledge they have around their customer base and how we can then bring that in to build up a single view and uh, offer additional products, value-adding products or rewards for customers, whether that be uh, on our HVAC side, our heating, uh, ventilation and aircon unit, which again, we have you know, 4,600 engineers in that space. So it's opening up new opportunities and territories to us. So, yeah. oh, go ahead. As I was going to say, additionally to that, um, we're across multiple uh, sectors, but uh, the problem, death by Excel, uh, was, was in the financial services. We're in, located in Wall Street, as I mentioned, and uh, this problem of legacy disparate data sources and understanding and knowing your data uh, was a common problem. Uh, banks were just throwing people at the problem. So uh, his use case was 1,700 applications, a lot of them legacy, it fits right into what we do. And uh, cataloging is a, is a, he mentioned we catalog, and with that discover and search engine that we have, we enable search across the enterprise, but discovery, we uh, auto tag and auto classify the sensitive data into the catalog automatically, and that's a key uh, uh, part of what we do, and it, yeah. Was that, Dave, something, in, I'm thinking of differentiation, wanting to know what is unique about IO Tahoe, what was the opportunity that you guys saw, but is the cataloging of the sensitive information one of the key things that makes it different? We, uh, we enable data governance, so it's not just sensitive information. Uh, we catalog the entire data set, multiple data sets, um, and what makes us, what differentiates us is that the machine learning, uh, we interrogate and brute force the data. So every single, so metadata beyond, so billion rows, 100,000 columns, large complex data sets, we interrogate every field value, and we tell you, well this looks like a phone number, this looks like an address, this looks like a first name, this looks like a last name, and we tag that to the catalog. And then anything that's sensitive in nature, we'll color code it. Red, green, highly sensitive, sensitive. So that's our big differentiator. So it's that like 100% visibility into the granularity yes. of what is in this data. Yes, that's that, and that's one of the issues. Is we're here at AWS, uh, we're finding a lot of folks are wanting to go to the cloud, but they can't get access to the data, they don't know their data, they don't understand it. Um, and so we're that bridge, we're a key strategic partner for AWS uh, uh, and, and we're excited about the opportunity that's come, up, come about in the last uh, six months yeah. with AWS because we're going to be that key piece for migration to the cloud. So the, the data lake, I love the name, IO Tahoe, but in, in your opinion, you know, you can hear so many different things about Data lake, data turning into a data swamp. Is there still a lot of value in data lakes that customers, just like you were saying before, they just don't yeah. know what they have? Well, what's interesting, and this is a good transition to one of our other clients, but, um, and I just want to make a note that we, we actually started in the relational uh, world. So we're RWMS, we're across heterogeneous environment. Um, so, but uh, Tahoe it does have more to do with lake, but um, at a time, a few years back, everybody was just dumping data into the lake. They, they didn't understand what, what was in there. And it's created in this era of privacy a big issue. And Comcast had this problem, the large Teradata instance just dumping into the lake, not understanding uh, data flows, how their data's flowing, not understanding uh, what's in the lake sensitivity wise, and they want to start, you know, they want to enable BI, they want to they want to start doing analytics, but they got to understand and know the data, right? Um, so for Comcast, we enable data ops for them uh, auto automatically with our machine learning. Um, so that was one of the use cases, and then uh, they put the information in, and we integrated it with Apache Atlas, and uh, they have a large AWS instance, and they're able to then better govern their data. Um, and uh, so, and GE Digital, one other uh, customer, very complex use case uh, around their data, uh, 36 ERPs uh, being migrated to one virtual ERP in the lake. And uh, think about finance data, uh, how difficult that is to manage and understand. So we were a key piece in helping that migration happen in weeks rather than months. Yeah. So David, you, you mentioned cloud, clearly we're, we're at a cloud show, um, but you mentioned knowing your data, 
One of the aspects of that cloud is that it, it moves fast and it's at a much bigger scale than what we've been used to. Yes. So I'm interested, maybe Eddie, you can, you can yeah. fill us in here as well about the, the use of a tool yep. to help you know your data when mm -hmm. we're not creating any less data, there's just more and more data. So at this speed and at this scale, how yep. important is it that you actually have tooling to provide to the, to the humans who have to go and yep. operate on all of this data? Building on what David was saying around the, uh, the speed and the agility side, uh, you know, uh, all our information now in North, for our North America home business is in AWS, all in NS3 bucket. We are you know, already starting work with AWS Connect and the call center side, being able to stream that information through. So we're getting to the point now as an organization where we're able to profile the data real time and take that information but predict what the customer's going to do as part of the machine learning side. So we're starting to trial where we will interject into a call to say, well, you know, a customer might be on your digital site trying to do a journey. You can see the challenges around data and you could then go in with a chat using, say, the new AWS chat that's um, just coming through at the moment. So One of the things great I'm, opportunities. I'm hearing, sorry Eddie, is the opportunity to leverage the insights into the data to deliver more, you mentioned like customer rewards, or more personalized experiences, or a call center agent knowing mm -hmm. this is the problem that this customer is experiencing, this, yeah. we have tried X, Y, and Z to resolve, or this customer is loyal, yep. they pay their bills on time, they should be eligible for some sort of reward program. Mm -hmm. I think as consumers, that I think Amazon.com has created this, this demanding consumer yeah. that we expect you to know us, uh -huh. we expect you to serve us up things that you think we want. Talk to me about the opportunity that IOTA is, is giving your business to be able to delight customers in ways that you probably couldn't even have predicted. Yeah, well, d d David touched on the tagging earlier. You know, so by understanding the data that's coming through, uh, being able to use the data flow technology and categorizing, we're able then to link it in with the wider estate. So David mentioned Comcast around 36 ERP, you know, We've just gone through the same uh, in other parts of our organization. We're driving that additional level of value, turning it away from being a manually labor intensive task. So I used to have uh, you know, 20 architects that daily go through trying to build and understanding the relationship. I do not need that now. I just have a couple of people that are able to take the output and then be able to validate the information using the products. And, and I, I'd like to add, there's just so much, you mentioned a customer 360 example at a call center. There's so much data ops that has to happen to make that happen. Uh, and that's the most you know, difficult uh, challenge to solve. And uh, that's where we come in. And after you catalog the data, I just want to touch on this, uh, we enable search for the enterprise. So uh, you've now connected to 50, 100, 1500 sources with our uh, software. Now uh, you've cataloged it, you've profiled it. Uh, now you can search. Uh, Karen, Kim, Kim Smith. Uh, so your, your, your engineers, your, your architect, your data stewards, your influencers, your business analysts, business folks can now search anything they want and find anything sensitive, find that person, find an invoice and that helps enable what you mentioned, uh, the customer 360. Right, that 360, but yeah. I can also, what I'm hearing is, as an, an, uh, it has the potential to enable a better relationship between IT and the business. Absolutely, it brings those both together, because they're so siloed in this day and age. Uh, your data is siloed, and your business is siloed in the different business units, so this helps exactly co uh, collaborate, uh, crowdsource, bring it all together to one platform. Yeah. And how many, uh, you, so 1,700 applications? Yes. How many, you mentioned the 36 or so ERPs, what percentage, if you can guess, have you been able to reduce duplicate, triplicate, et cetera, applications, and what are some of the overarching business benefits that Direct Energy is achieving? So, so in terms of the Direct Energy side, we're just at the beginning of that journey. Uh, we're about four months in, but we've already um, decommissioned 12 of the applications, uh, and we're starting to move out to the wider side. In terms of benefits, ROI probably around 300% at the moment. In, in a few, 300% ROI in just a few months? Yes. 
just another, you know, you've got some of the basic savings around uh, the storage side. But we're also getting large savings from some of the existing uh, support agreements that we have in place. David touched on data ops. I've been able to reduce the amount of people that are required to, uh, to, to support the team. There is now a more common understanding within the organization. And I've managed to turn it more into a self-care opportunity with the uh, business operations by pushing the line from being a technical problem to a business uh, challenge. And at the, at the end of the day, they're the experts. They understand the data better than any IT folk that are set in a corner, right? So. I've got to ask you one more question, Eddie. Yeah, sure. What gave you the confidence that IO Tahoe was the right solution for you? Purely down to um, the, the, the open source side. So we come from a, um, you know, I've been using IO Tahoe probably for about two years uh, in parts of the organization. We were very early adopters on other technologies uh, in the open source market. And it was just their ability to, on the proof of concepts, be able to turn it around. Items where you'll go to a traditional vendor, which would take a few months, large business cases, didn't need any of that. We were able to show results within 24, 48 hours. And that buys the confidence. And I'm sure David would take the challenge of being able to plug in some data sets and show you the data. Cool stuff, guys. Well, thank you for sharing with us what you guys are doing at IO, IO Tahoe, keeping that data lake blue, and okay. the successes that you're achieving in such a short time at Direct Energy. Thank you. Appreciate your time, guys. Thank you for Excellent. having us on. Our thank pleasure. You. Know your data. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> know your data. Know your data. <laughs> for, for my guest and my co-host, Justin Warren, I'm Lisa Martin. I'm going to go off and learn my data now. You've been watching theCUBE at <laughs> AWS reInvent 19. Thanks for watching.